Well, I've been I've been dying to ask you about Quentin since I've I've loved your I'm sounding like a stupid fan, but I, you know, like <laughs> like many people, <laughs> I lo love you your really work like with him. <laughs> I mean, w Wes uh, is very very particular in a way that I kind of liked and it's unusual. But I wondered if is Quentin very fastidious about his script and text? Very, yeah. very, mm. and 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 so am I. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't dare to, but I wouldn't want to mm -hmm. change a comma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't really flow so well. Can we? No, 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 no. That m my job is um, um, to, to try to fathom what he entrusts me with mm -hmm. and not to, you know, bend it and pull it down to my level so it's comfortable. Have you ever worked with directors who say, change it, do diff different stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or let's improvise. Mm -hmm. Do you hate that? Oh. It's the worst. I can't do it, mm -hmm. uh, nor would I want to. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you can question which one's first. Mm -hmm. You don't want to because you can't, or you can't because you don't want to. Mm -hmm. or, or Wes doesn't improvise either, does no. he? No, again, n not a comma. Yeah, no, why would you? It's I remember one funny, he had a shot with a, in, a, in, a, in a train sequence, and the train slows down, and it's a snowy landscape, and there are all these soldiers. And my line was, why have we stopped in a barley field? There's no way you could tell it was a barley field. So I said, Wes, I know, it, does it really make sense that he would say this? He's like, he said, no, 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 I think it, it'll be fine, just say. And of course, he uses the original line, and it doesn't, <laughs> it's fine. In fact, it's very funny. I, <laughs> I remember, and I, I have to tell you, but it's, it's so interesting, and I'm not, I'm not lying. Mm -hmm. I remember Noticing that you said barley field, even though there's snow, snow. in the background, right. but barley field evokes the whole Eastern European okay. thing. You know, okay. it's barley; it's not wheat. Okay. And they eat broken barley. Uh, okay. You know, poor people. Okay. I, I noticed that, okay. and I noticed how wonderfully, precisely yeah. observed it is. Okay. Yeah, well. well, there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Have you noticed that that as a respected dramatic actor you do something that people laugh about all of a sudden they're irritated and say well, how come you do comedy well if it, they have these there are these slightly worrying simplistic divisions because often comedy contains tragedy and you know and ov over the course of your time as an actor did you notice that the the pigeon holding mm -hmm. has gotten more and more restricted well, the, the, the Grand Budapest did feel like someone, Wes, shone a light for me in another place. Well, and it was, when people sometimes, I'm sure you get asked the question, the what part would you like to play? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I just say, I want to play the part I don't know, never heard of, that lands to the letterbox. And they say, ah. And that was, in a way, what happened with the Grand Budapest Hotel. It was some of the finest, subtlest, and most wonderful performances that I've seen you do and w it was uh, one of the m most wonderful things to watch if I if I may thank say you. that quickly. I feel embarrassed but thank you yes but much. that's <laughs> thank you. partly of it um, but th as you're talking about that that's a world in th the roots of Wes's world are in the Stefan Zweig stories does that connect with you at all that well w you pointed it out before it's it's and, and it's really um, uh, one of the few principles or convictions I have that the flip side is always in more interesting. Mm -hmm. So you have something tragic like uh, a country being ripped apart by fascists and people being victimized, mm -hmm. yet it is told in a way that makes you chuckle and mm -hmm. laugh. Mm -hmm. And so it's really through the humor and through the lightness and playfulness that this this um, tragedy um, becomes digestible. That's something that I admire in you. Is this you have this brilliant, very very precise lightness. In um, Vienna, you call that you pour lukewarm coffee onto each other. <laughs> <laughs> what we are doing right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about Big Eyes because I I know the story a tiny bit. I had a wonderful wonderful discussion with Tim Burton. Mm -hmm because of the cultural perspective on these paintings mm -hmm. that are in the center of, of the story, 
uh, are fascinatingly opposed. Because I grew up in Vienna, and as a kid, I was dragged to the museum. Um, I, I didn't mind, but you know, I was just a regular kid. I was a little bored, and only later I got interested in. But that's how I grew up. And Tim grew up in Burbank, and um, what he saw as art was keen. <laughs> and being a, a cultural snob, I looked down on it. Um, yet Tim explained to me that there is uh, no reason to look down, and I fully got it. I fully understood that, that the interesting, the really interesting bit lies beyond it. And so I'm, I'm very curious to see whether that is actually part of, of the movie, because that's the most interesting... Is she still alive? She She's still alive, yeah. And the husband? No, isn't. No, no. Have you played people who, who are still alive? No, no, I haven't. One, I've, yes, no, I'm sorry, I, Charles Van Doren in Quiz Show. Um, he had no connection when we were making the film. I didn't get yeah, to meet okay. him. Well, because I, mm -hmm. I think that's mm -hmm. the only way. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? You can't, you can't sort of meet and interview and try to emulate. Um, I had one weird, well, we, uh, when we did that film, um, John Turturro's character, Herbert Stemple, John Turturro was playing. He was on set. He came, wanted to be part of it. Um, mm. Richard Goodwin, the lawyer, played by Rob Morrow, he was also around. And I was told, don't go near Charles Van Doren because there's legal problems, because we are, some of his family life is in the movie and it's not technically in the public domain or whatever, it's not, it's private. So, so I was very curious and then they, I went, I drove with one of the producers, we drove up one very, very humid day to, to the place where he, he lives, not intending to do anything except to get a feel for this is the area where he, but we did get directions to the family house and we heard that he lived on a little house on the property. And as we drove up there on the, on the stoop, on the porch, there he was. Uh, and we were, there's <laughs> Charles Vendor, there's Charles Vendor. <laughs> and uh, we stopped the car and I, I, didn't, I didn't want to say that I was attempting to play him, but I wanted to hear his voice. So I asked him directions. Oh. And he spoke. And I'd been watching all this footage of him. And I don't know what it gave me. It, didn't, it gave me anything. It gave me some sense of connection. There's a real person sitting quite vulnerable. Who's, who's, who's this person? Strange people in a car. Tell me about your audition <laughs> for Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, I can't really deal with auditions very well. I don't know how you feel. I hate them. Now, I've never asked anyone to audition for me, but you have. Mm -hmm. Do you feel a sense of responsibility? No, no, don't change it. Just can, can I hear about your audition? Well, it was just you. an audition. Okay, you know, okay. there's nothing, okay, nothing okay. M much, m you know, well, it, it would be something. on the anecdotal level. Okay. You That's know, all right. Yeah, he, he, he called for audition, but, you know, it's kind of six years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, he called for an audition, and, and of course everybody auditioned for him, and, mm -hmm. and um, so did I. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did the whole thing with Quentin. I did the, the whole script, mm -hmm. the whole part. He read all the other parts, and, and, and I read that one part. And we did it twice on two different days. And I was very impressed by that, because uh, he really didn't trust his, uh, his... I mean, he trusted his, uh, his first impression and his instinct, as he always does, but he backs it up. 